Okay, so welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Tom uh, from Synthesis Group, and uh, myself and Naveen will be facilitating the dialogue with uh, Raju today. So we have some people online, and the people online can join by putting their hand up uh, on their Zoom call, and Devin will let us know, and then we'll bring them in as, as we can. So we're going to use a, a fishbowl process. And there was a little bit of confusion last time around about what's meant by a fishbowl process. So we'll just give you our definition for now. So there's six seats here at the front. And if somebody wants to speak, uh, to ask a question or to make a comment, please come to one of the seats. Uh, it's not exclusively that we'll be asking Raghu to answer all questions. We'll have some interaction between people in the fishbowl seats. Um, we're asking people to limit their, their contributions to two and a half minutes, max three minutes, and uh, to give everybody a chance to talk, including those online. And again, I will try and manage the interaction. If, if a lot of interactions happen between people and the fishbowl, and if it's going on a little bit, I might have to uh, ask people to, to pause it because we're time limited. We're going to finish at 6.30 sharp today. We went on as long as it took last time, but uh, today it's uh, 6.30 sharp. Okay, so I'd like to, uh, anything, I, anything I forgot there? So I'd like to invite Tom, anybody you should, who wants- You should remind to... people that two and a half to three minutes is the length of a love song. The length of what? Most pop songs, especially <laughs> love songs are usually two and a half to three minutes long. Uh, so super, quite so... a long time. Okay, I don't have a watch, so I'll sing a love song silently when people are yeah, speaking. Yeah, that's okay. right. <laughs> okay, so I'd like to invite whoever wants to kick off to, to take the front seat. And do we have a, yeah, okay. space for up to six. So uh, I am Paulette. I am in Auroville for the past 37 years, but I come from the Sherobindo Ashram, and this is what makes uh, the whole difference. So I, I came originally to work at Matrimandir Construction, and uh, I can tell you that uh, if you had this kind of experience and with those people, what is going around now is absolutely monstrous. In brief, as long as I was at the ashram, I was a bhakti. I was introduced to some of the greatest early sadhaks. And in fact, all my work is inspired by Nolini Kantagupta, whom Sherobindo declared the third one on the way to the supermind, and the one who bought best master is teachings. But I was doing nothing of this at the ashram. I was only reading Shorobindo sonnets and mother's prayers and doing the flower collage and writing poems and wiping dishes at the dining room and doing touching up at the mother photographs for the ashram press. Then I moved to Auroville because the wounds with the Shorobindo society was still quite strong. It was not the matter of the ashram, but some Aurovillian were mistaking the Sherobindo society with the ashram. So I felt that I should bring a disconnection. It worked very well. Now the, the ashram, in fact, are supporting us to the point that my last book, which is the 13th one of the series, is now not only on sale, like my other's book with the Ashram publisher, Sabda, but it's directly in the Sabda window nearby the Samadhi. And it was put like this 
on Sherobindo CD Day. So I had a surprise when I went for Darshan. Anyhow, I realized that as long as I was at the ashram, they were all these fantastic sadak and scholars. So I could afford the luxury of being just a bhakti. But when I moved to Auroville, the situation was quite tough because the fight with the Sherobindo society was not yet over. The condition, the living condition was still terrible. And I choose myself to go living even worse than the pioneers. So I lived for 14 years in the green belt in a hut. I had no bathroom. My bathroom was a cement slab along the canyon. And at the same time, I started doing research. So right now I published 13 books, yeah. of which three on our okay. during the mother okay. lifetime, okay. and uh, the other nine on yoga and Advaita Vedanta also. And uh, I started with the Center of Human Unity, which was together with the Laboratory of Evolution, and the purpose of the Center of Human Unity, instituted by Kiri Joshi, funded by the government of India, was to bring to the community the original vision undiluted, uncensored of the mother on Matrimandir, the town, the guidelines. So this is the work I've been doing for the past 37 years. Our well, compilations and uh, unmute doesn't help. But you know, it's three minutes now, so you could yeah. bring it to a close. So I'll be very fast. The fact is that I feel like the, you know, the people touching the elephants and saying, this is the elephant. And none of them touch the elephant because no one is aware any longer of what are mother guidelines, what is the real galaxy. And so there is no way, it doesn't matter who wins, who loses, because anyhow, nobody has this knowledge. Because we were off. cut off from that. Yeah, so now it. you cannot even throw out the people because it's not even their the fault. Volume? Nobody yeah, told them right anything. So, yeah, so the it's the last thing I'm going to say. Plus, uh, yeah. The admission form of the mother see to be signed by the mother. Yeah, the first of all, you have to work any, a minimum yeah, of six hours a day. Well, yeah. You could not well, be taken. You really are going way over the time now. Well, sorry. I, I am sorry. You understand that you are talking yeah. of something which has nothing to do with the mother. I, I'm just yeah. facilitating here, and I'm the, kind of the rule keeper. And I'm just uh, the, the, the rules we established was to try and keep it to three minutes. I'm really interested in what you're saying. But, but we have to uh, we have to give space to everybody. Yeah, and anyhow, the last things is that there were no fees. You understand that this changed absolutely everything. Everybody was accepted right away by the mother herself, provided the people work. And if they had no money, they were taken in charge immediately. Thank you, Paulette, yeah, thank you. Tom, uh, maybe we should ask the same person to speak a little more because I think what she said was a little truncated and you know, a coherent idea hasn't come through. Can you say that again, Raghu? I didn't hear you clearly. Pardon? Can you just repeat what you said, Raghu? I didn't hear I you. I said today. maybe the person who spoke, I didn't get her name. Paulette. If you can give her a little more time, there were a few points she made, but I don't think it was tied together. So I couldn't really make out what was being said. I don't know if others got what she was saying. So I'm just suggesting, can you give her a little more time? So let's... Uh, Okay, Paulette, do you want to continue then? 
Yeah, two more minutes. So you should know that as long as the mother was alive and the Sherobindo society was running the show, the guidelines were implemented. So there were no money asked to accede. People had to support themselves one year, but if they could not and work proficiently, they were taken in charge right away. When I joined Auroville in 85, in the middle of the war with the Sherobindo Society, this position was maintained. So I didn't pay anything to be accepted. And the other thing, because there is a, and this kept the archive and I have an original, the admission form to be signed by the mother. This is what I'm talking now. Another essential condition was that if you were taken in charge by Auroville, of course, at those conditions. Then you had to surrender whatever you had. So there were no pensions, there were no rents, there were no flats. And the other thing, you had to work every day. So there were no summer holidays like now. So the moment they have abolished the guidelines of the mother, They've killed Auroville. And I've been fighting for the past 37 years. And what I'm telling you now, I already told the secretary. In fact, it was the first meeting, and I think you should know, that the secretary doesn't know that there are other positions because she kept meeting the same people, either one camp or the forest group. She doesn't know anything about the other people. And she's prevented from meeting people because I met her personally twice alone, telling her names of things happening. But the third time when I was ready to tell her everything, I was no longer allowed. But the other things I told the secretary and she knows and they show up with the original master plan of the galaxy. Can you imagine that the ATDC did, had never seen the original I had two copies, I gave one, because this is the condition. There is no knowledge whatsoever of what was happening with the mother. So the secretary didn't know that in the galaxy, as well in the master plan, the residents has to live the, the single in 30 square meters. You understand that this makes all the difference to live in 30 square meters? And then there are absolutely no cars, not one single car. So you understand that it makes no sense to keep discussing what we are discussing now, because whatever they discuss has nothing to do with what the mother said. And what I told you, I was part of the Center of Human Unity for five years. It was the government who was paying. I came up with several compilation all details and the compilation were distributed for free to the whole community accord, along with the news. So the community at that time was informed and moreover they lived that way. Thank you. So my prayer is to go back finally, the admission form of the mother. Oh, and there is, this is the last thing I'm going to say. So there was this admission form but there were also the discussion going on. So in fact, the mother signed three policies. And before coming with these three policies, there is a statement with the key statement. So it was the administrative committee of our will that she had appointed. And they came up with this conclusion that no rules are needed in our will. Clear? no rules, provided the people lived according to the guidelines and the many messages that the mother had given and nothing else was needed. And then they conclude saying, it is the mother who will decide who is an Orovillian. So far, there are no Orovillians. This was in 1971.
Do you want to say anything, Raghu? No, uh, I'm, I'm just listening. Okay. So I would like to invite whoever wants to come to the front to share. Okay, we have somebody online. Hello. Uh, I would just like to say I was a member of the community since 1969. And mother had said very clearly that in order there are no rules and as long as there are no rules, there is hope. Uh, she had welcomed all people of goodwill toward to Oroville. And she asked us to live together with goodwill toward all, goodwill from all. And uh, I don't think that she wanted to make a rule of 20 square meters, of 15 square meters, or 500 square meters. I, I never saw that because she was giving us permission to build here, there, and everywhere. She was, she wanted something else here. She wanted an evolutionary consciousness. She wanted us to learn how to live and work together. And I think the community has actually done a great job. So I'm very happy to be here in Oroville. Thank you. Play about the 30 square meters oh, no. is in the galaxy master plan signed by the mother. We, we, we need to have uh, more voices. Sure, that's also part of it. I'm sure there's also room for bigger houses with gardens and uh, people have different processes and different needs, but I'm sure that's also part of it the 30 square meter. I'm sure that there are many people who are ready to live like that. It's not a, so should, it should not be pushed away. It should be developed also. I don't know why uh, we meet here today. I, I'm not sure, are, are we just expressing ourselves about anything or? I thought- uh, uh, I've been invited. I've been invited here in case people want to comment about what I had said earlier or, you know, take it forward in some way. That's my understanding. Okay. So, so I'm I, not necessarily going to be engaging in a conversation with you in a sense, not because I've said what I've had to say. Okay. Yeah. So if it's a discussion amongst you, I'm quite happy to listen. If there's okay. something you want me to clarify about what I've said, I can do that. Okay. So I have many things to say, of course, like everybody. I have just a one little feeling I would like to put out there. And that is um, a very large part of my surroundings are very, uh, I, I, I don't understand, I would like to understand, but I feel that people are very addicted to uh, emotional reactions. I see it as an addiction. I see every time this spiral comes and, and wipes out all forms of uh, dialogue and discussion, it just keeps coming back all the time. And I know that there are many uh, people out there who do not have that. And I thought you were, we, we were talking last time about that, also that healing process, no? I don't get it. I don't understand why people are still so in that emotional vortex, I don't understand it. <laughs> really don't. Hey, yeah, come please and sit. If, if anybody wants to speak, just take a seat there. My name is Sandira and uh... I mean, it's, I wanted to say something else, but maybe just shortly to Hans, um, I think people are afraid. They don't trust anymore anybody. 
So also like uh, this dialogue, uh, many people are suspecting any kind of manipulation, anything. So they just don't feel safe. And so a lot of agitation is happening out of that. But what I really am interested in is because I'm really appreciating how you put it together, uh, the Mahabharata and the spiral dynamic aspects. And um, for me, you give actually Madame Secretary's place in the clockwork, in the blue meme. Um, I would like to understand this point a bit more because for, for me, um, like Mother was saying, we have our own governance. So actually, um, what role does the Foundation Act play? What role does uh, the RA play? And where do you see the dream, um, the Oroville dream and the Oroville charter? So it's certainly more in Krishna <laughs> realm than in, in the blue meme. So uh, I, I wonder how all this works together. And I also can see that we were kind of um, very weak in, in putting our legislative in order. So, so it, we had a big mess. I see that was the reason why actually the government could step in. Uh, but now we need to have a balance because for me, it's not actually only that the government has the role to play. And if they have to play the role, they also, uh, for me, it's, it, it's the way, uh, the functional way. So not the dysfunctional way. I see a lot of dysfunctional way because otherwise the people wouldn't be so scared. So only when I have a dysfunctional blue mean people are scared. So, but we are scared. We are scared to, to, uh, to voice our opinion and everything. So I would love that you say something to that. See, uh, I, think, I think we're talking about the same thing. Uh, I'm not saying, uh, in my understanding, I don't think you're ready for a dialogue. I think there is some work to be done before a dialogue can happen. And I'm suggesting one part of what needs to be done. One part of what needs to be done is the healing. There are other parts also that need to fall in place. And I think if I understand you right, uh, you know, which I've said, stated clearly, uh, this, there, are three, there are three groups of people uh, who seem to have a say as a group in what's going on. And I don't see these three groups have a shared criteria for what they're saying. They don't seem to have a, a clearly shared and understood uh, way in which they look at each other's responsibilities. And on the whole, um, you know, what, what we call as the clockwork space has huge gaps, which will, which allows all kinds of uh, incursions to take place at the physical level, at the governance level, at every level of Auroville. Now, unless you can come together with convergence on some of these things, I don't see how you can go forward. And this will be the steady state. This, what is happening now, will get repeated again and again in different forms. So in my understanding, what's happening now is triggered by certain events, but those triggers are not as important as where the responses are coming from. That is permanent, not the trigger. I, I mean, we, we said this already uh, for a dialogue or for a healing, even a healing, 
we kind of need to, to feel this safe space. So the, sure. if you if you give the uh, responsibility of the blue mean towards uh, Madam Secretary, so we, we have to have the feeling that this is actually uh, executed in in a functional way. I'm not saying that I'm totally agreeing with this po position from her, but if this is given for the time being, so it it. Uh, it would be great if this would be executed in a more uh, harmonious way that we have the foundation of going into a healing process in something. But this is, that means again, the visa issues, everything should be solved. I mean, we should just feel safe here. And for me, it's not really working to put us in, in three different categories because for, 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 for me, it's just, if if we label ourselves, we put the division in us. So so uh, we need to overcome it. We need to see the people in each other and seeing and and there are friends everywhere in in each positioning. And I can really say I'm not agreeing to certain action points, but that's different. So I'm not agreeing to certain action points from all sides. Well, mainly from all sides. <laughs> I, it, yeah, I, no, I now I, I spoke too long, so I, no, I understand that. I understand that, and that's. I think we're saying the same thing. Uh, thank, thank you, Raju, for being with us again. This is B here. You, you may remember we had some good chats. I, I just want to. Follow, Sandira is right. Uh, you're, you're, what you're saying is also right, except I wouldn't go for the three groups. There's only one operative group that's happening now, and that's the group of the foundation office. So Jayanti uh, group is effectively on the ground doing aggressive acts every single day. So uh, if Sandira calls that an unsafe environment or anybody's in fear and everything, we got to get over that, in my view. Uh, it's not, there's no, that's not a place to go. The place to go is we need the communication, we need the understanding from that side, what's happening. So out on the road today, you know, they dug another hole. Everybody's driving by these things every single day and it's a mess. So that kind of aggravation uh, creates a climate in which nobody really wants to talk to each other. And somehow, how to break that stalemate. So I think it's going to continue for a while until it gets into a deeper ditch. And then uh, something will happen. Uh, I right now, as you said, and as most people have said, uh, Hans is, you know, what Hans said, you know, he doesn't understand why it's happening. I understand because uh, nothing is happening from, let's say, the other two groups that you mentioned. It's only happening. The only operative group is the foundation office and they're calling the shots and everybody else has to live with it. So this is what has to change. And this is not going to change, I don't see, very soon. I sometimes would like to know when every day aggressive acts. And uh, this is what I mean when you talk about a hole in the ground being so terrible, uh, a road, a crown road being built, being so terrible, and all the time negative, and all the time, oh my, what are they doing now? Oh, it's so muddy. Yeah, that's what I mean about the uh, emotional uh, kind of uh, spiral, uh, blackmail all the time. We have to stop doing that. How about uh, not being opposed to? How about rather, I don't know how to call it, but uh, join in, I don't know. Uh, might be handy to have a manager of some sorts who can 
maybe put some organization in the groups. Maybe the work you're doing is more needed in these groups than with us, because anyway, we're, we're going to be a mess anyway. The public is not, uh, we are full of opinions and yeah. Better get the house in order with mother's guidelines and the groups. And uh, yeah, maybe you need a manager to do that. Uh, but people are not able to, they're all stuck in their trenches and uh, everything is terrible and everything is bad and like that. I'm, I'm, I'm quite nervous actually, I don't know if I... And sorry for the back to the people in the room, but uh, um, I have a question for Ragu, so it's uh, just the right place to watch too. So last time you mentioned that you wrote an email to the governing board, I guess, to understand what is the next step from their side. Did you get any reply? And if so, what was the reply? No, I couldn't, I couldn't hear you clearly. See, I come closer to the, to the computer, yeah. maybe it's better. I was asking if you got any reply from the governing board to whom you sent an email I guess I imagine to ask for any follow up to your presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got. What Dana wants to do is uh, to see if we can create a group of 20, 25 people who are interested in looking at what healing means. Yeah. So, what I've suggested, what I've suggested as something, some process that we start to support what you've already done in the dream weaving process. I just tentatively called it the heart weaving and uh, Dana was happy with it. In fact, she, she actually came up with the final name. So she's coming here mid-December and she would like to see if there's a small group of people interested in looking at how healing can happen. So then I send the national we'll, advisory we'll council. take it forward from there is what my understanding is. Yeah. So this, this person is the chairman of the, the international advisory. The, I, I, the whatever, I, IAC. Yeah. So a governing board, did you get any reply from them? I think she has spoken to the governing board and whatever. She spoke to me a few days back and said, uh, you know, this is what's the latest. Okay. No, because you see, again, I look in the room and uh, I see only faces of uh, people from, uh, not so many, maybe one, <laughs> not so many from, uh, from those who closely support the secretary and, and the governing board. So it seems for, to me, as I, as I mentioned the last time as well, that there is not so much intention to, to find uh, solutions or healing even. But okay, thank you. And um, I had a question from Synthesis, the group. Uh, uh, what's next in your in your mind? So maybe Tom, you can answer. So you, so I heard now that there is this intention of creating a group of 2025, maybe in December. But before, okay, December is around the corner. I mean, we are in December. But like, what what do you want to do soon? Is only that a limited group of people? How you select them? What is your next step? We don't have a plan. Um, my understanding, just to, the, the synthesis group is a very, it's an informal group of people. It kind of changes, never get the same meet, just explaining for everybody, the meet every Thursday in Matramando Gardens. And I don't think you've ever had the same configuration of people. So it's not, it's not a group that really speaks with one voice. So it's, it's an informal group, just trying to hold a space for synthesis. And uh, when this, uh, initiative came, uh, Ragu was uh, invited to Oroville and Devon was acting as the interface. We decided to uh, support this process and see where it went. So we, we don't have a roadmap for it, to be honest with you. The uh, council came on, we, we had a meeting on Thursday and the, the couple of members of the uh, the council came and invited us to a meeting next week to discuss what might be next steps. There's no plan. For me, I can just speak personally. Uh, not, I don't really feel qualified to, to, to speak on behalf of a, an informal group. It's a bit tricky. Um, 
But me personally, I stand for healing and, you know, deep dialogue since well before I ever came across this. And as you know, I, I've made some attempts uh, in this area. So I'm tentatively supporting anything that will foster dialogue. But, you know, that's, I know that's kind of woolly and uh, it's not very specific. I'm hoping that something, uh, you know, in my most optimistic viewpoint or wish would be that something would come out of this, that there might be an energy that people would feel, okay, we can get behind something. I mean, there would be have to, but I don't know. So I'm, I was kind of hopeful for this meeting that people kind of almost check out Raghu, ask him some tough questions. That's what I would like. Challenge him. See, you know, so let's find out. That's what yeah. that's what I would be hoping personally, yeah. and make your own decision. So I have some more points, if I may. Why why challenge yeah. me? We have to challenge the whole context. <laughs> yes, Giovanni. See, um, so we heard, I think, from Sandira uh, this uh, request of having a safe space. I think Jan, Jan what is your name? Jan oh. Hans. Hans saying uh, we are too much into the emotion. So I won't I won't be in the safe. So I, I, want, I want to be in the emotional uh, side, but I want to just say a few things. So I have a friend uh, who is, whose name is Peter. So he's, he's German, he's eight, 90, 80, no, 81 soon, 80 soon. And so anyway, he's old, he's old, he's old. And uh, he was waiting for months and months in Germany to get his visa and he, he couldn't get it. And then suddenly he received an email from the working committee of the governing board. The group last time I said, uh, the Unreal. And, um, and this email was saying simply, because you don't work for the community and uh, because you don't live in Oroville uh, long enough, then uh, you can apply for a tourist visa. So these guys met the mother. This guy was one of the pioneers. He spent all his life here. He had a house, he gave away his house because it was too, too big. So he, he went uh, living in a smaller place as uh, respecting the criteria Poletto was mentioning. And then suddenly he can't get back to Oroville. So this is crazy. And I think it's crazy as well uh, as uh, what happened to another friend, uh, Satprem, who is uh, an architect very well known in India. And suddenly uh, the, the secretary, Gianti, uh, sent uh, uh, an email to the, uh, to the office in charge of uh, issuing visa. He, he was applying for another entry because he, he used the two entries he has for his visa or three, he wanted another entry. And what was in this communication? Something she got from the working committee, the Unreal. And so again, it's, it's unbelievable. So she wrote to, this, uh, uh, to the office in Chennai that he's uh, the Satprem involved in anti-governmental activities. Now, I think everyone in this room knows him. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable, not that the secretary wrote that, because, but the working committee, this Unreal group, how on earth you can write this? How on earth? Oh my God, this just is unreal as they are. So these are two points. Another point, um, we have this uh, exercise of the ROR update. It's taking ages. It, they got, I think, five deadlines. Now, I'm, I was in the business. When you give a deadline, it's one deadline. Okay, you can extend a second time. They gave five deadlines, it's a joke. It's a joke. So uh, maybe six, I don't even count them, I stopped counting. So you know why they do this? Because without the updating of the ROR, the resident assembly cannot vote. But so I have, to, um, I have to imagine now that the only reason why they're taking so long is this, because otherwise it doesn't make sense. What is a completely inefficiency um, pattern? And I'll show you another example, it's my last. So um, I live here since some, some years, and I'm not a formerly an Orovillian. Maybe people don't know. Eh? I'm only a confirmed Orovillian because uh, after the newcomer process, you have to meet the secretary. That is a formality. It used to be a formality. And then only then you are included in the ROR. You know how it's taking this uh, to have this meeting? After one year and a half, I'm still waiting for 10 minutes of Gianti. Now, I, I asked her, in person two times, because I met her in my capacity as, as RIS member 
few times. I sent two emails, which were never replied. So again, inefficiency, total inefficiency. You sent an email to an office, they don't reply. Not even acknowledging the email, just black hole, as I, as I said once in a, in a post on our So black hole, and it's not only me. I went to the entry service and I discovered, I had to insist, I asked one time via email, no reply, three times. Finally, I went to the office and uh, a poor lady had to admit, you know how many people are waiting for this meeting? 150, more than 150 newcomers are only confirmed the Rovilians, are still not the Rovilians because they have to meet the secretary. 150 people. She wants to bring 3,000 people in one year or 50,000 people soon in a few years. There's still 150 Orovillians who are not real Orovillians because they have to meet the secretary. So, Giant, if you hear me, please just so have these 100 people meeting because it, it's not taking so much of your time. Now, uh, Giovanni. Uh, Yes. Maybe you could just pause for a minute and come back later because... Uh, yes, then uh, he was uh, coming to the more uh, constructive part. Eh? Well, that was just... destructive, <laughs> but I will, I will, I will, I will stay can, here. You can come back in a couple of minutes, yeah. No, uh, can I just make a comment here? Uh, see, Giovanni, when I listen to you people now, I just don't know what to say because I understand your despair fully. But the place, I mean, the, the role that I've been asked to play is to try and understand the context and make some suggestions. That's what I'm doing. I'm hoping I've captured the underlying dynamics accurately. And if I've done that, then I have some possibility of doing something. If I haven't captured the dynamics, then, you know, what in any case, I can't do anything. So that's, that's where I am, right? And I hope you appreciate that. Because I really hear this despair and I understand what it must be like if somebody has put all their life into something and then they find that for no real meaningful reason, that's under threat. Yeah, and right, and I've worked with many people in this context, not just in Oroville, in other places too. Yeah. And I've been close to that in my life a couple of times, okay? So it's not just a intellectual understanding and I know the feeling. Hans, uh, maybe yeah. Hans, maybe you, just, could, you could pass the microphone. Yeah, I'll just do because, one minute because uh, one second I'm done. Um, I think uh, the suffering with the entry process, like Paulette also mentioned, uh, has been terrible the last 25 years that I'm here. Really awful, much worse than I hear now, really. We have been suffering. People have been suffering incredibly. It's such a falsehood, the whole entry process, like so many aspects. And I just like to suggest one thing for our process to move on is really to try to surgically remove the idea of sides. There are no sides, actually. There's action taken, and you seem to be a very professional person. Maybe you go in there and work with that and get in. And the process of coming closer should happen there in the offices where work needs to be done. You know, it's no use to, to throw stones uh, and, and uh, there are no sides. It's really very important thing to say. They have to be done with it. There are no sides. There's only one side that's Auroville. My name is Daniel. <clears throat> uh, I was here in two times. First time was 44 years ago, but I left and came back 20 years ago. Uh, so going back to what he says about the ante, the ante was always like this a little bit. It took me, when I came back, I was 
uh, returning Orovillian at 11, at 11.15, I was newcomer. No, at 11, I, I paid for my house, and 11.15, I was newcomer, and 11.30, I was tourist. Because you don't come in Oroville for your uh, comfort. That was the reason. So um, he's going back. So he, he has been always like this. And it took me four years of tourist to become Orovillian again. So it's not new. What I, so if you look the, the year, you'll, you don't see many locals, actually one or two and working one, and the other one is resident assembly service, and the one, I don't know why is here, but uh, it's mostly white people. Huh? And this is one issue here, that as soon as you get a little bit farther from the concrete problems of money or land or this and that, then you have a, a white attendance. Uh, and this I regret. One thing that also I regret is that I feel that the last year he, he went from an international town to an anti-national town. And the, the word international was coming closer and closer to anti-national. And this I feel every day like this. And maybe is one thing that has to be solved. Uh, is maybe one of the root of the problem. So is, can a nationalistic government admit an international town? To me, yes, but it, it demands another level of consciousness. So this is an appeal to that. To, to, I asked one of the members of the, of the groups, the new groups, uh, you think that Oroville is a, an international town? He answered me, yes, but I want more people from Kulapalaya. So uh, Kulapalaya being the village next to it. So he, are we going to an Indian town? Uh, all your reference in your thing are Hindu. Huh? I come from a Kabbalistic background and, you know, they can be not only Hindu reference. In Oroville is the world. So it's more, I hope we will stay international. Now I've, I've used two references. One is called an Itihasa Purana. And if you want to call it Hindu, I can't stop you, but the other is uh, drawn from, you know, some version of spiral dynamics that we've worked on. So I guess I've used international resources. Hi, uh, hi, Rago. My name is Elisa. Uh, I think I'm talking to you, I'm talking to the synthesis group, I'm talking to us as a community, I'm talking to Giant Ravi. Um, I, I do feel that it is allowed for us as a review, as a collective body, to be in crisis. And I do feel that we are in an inflamed body right now on some levels, on some levels. Um, my way of perceiving 
the reality uh, is like, uh, there's a French pastry called the millefeuille, is a thousand leaves. So it's like many dimensions. And on one dimension, I would resonate with what Hans was saying, and there's no two side. I really resonate with that. And on another dimension, there are two sides. And we cannot, for me, we cannot also, we need to address that. And on this dimension, I'm clear also where I stand in, on my principle. It's not person related, it's principle related. Like I've heard many people in Oroville stand for. Um, when, when I heard your presentation, um, I felt, I felt that, um, how to say, so yes, for me, there is a crisis of governance with conflictual dynamics, but there is a crisis in the sense that, uh, for me, the dynamics that you were mentioning about some residents you met were received by me and by others as, as if you were um, labeling some dynamics from residents which are alive, like victimism or demonizing, or um, I, I don't have everything in mind, but uh, which are alive. But somehow for me, this came on from one side, basically it was one-sided. It didn't feel that, and I'm not saying you shall distribute blame for everyone, not at all. But if we go into the content of dynamics, then we shall give different colors of dynamics. Because that's where, for me, I can feel right now that as Sandira was saying, we need to feel safe. Yeah, for me, I need to trust. I need to trust that the way forward is held in a way that is truly not um, uh, taking these, what you observed, and making a label out of it. And I'm not saying you're doing it, but I've heard you know, when, when it was talked about the demonization, yes, I've heard some people doing that. I'm, I'm not doing that, I, I believe I'm not, but I've heard that. And yet, are we demonizing the demonization? You know, it's like, for me, um, can we stand in a way that is more, either we see dynamic in, those, in both directions, or we stand away from the dynamics. Um, or from the sides of residents. I don't know if I'm clear, but for me, I've heard, yeah, that I've heard that and which I've heard also some residents in meetings mentioning and voicing the lack of trust of your own neutrality, of your own stand that you can hold all the bodies in a way that is truly holding with openness and trust and trusting that there is a possible way forward because there are really serious concerns as you can, as you can hear. We have very serious concerns. Um, in fact, many of us have many serious concerns. And I do feel, I do feel that um, Yeah, we, we, I don't know how healing can come when certain things are not addressed and when also some actions are still, are still being taken on. So I'm wondering how to build trust on the way forward and, and how to hold the whole with all its bodies. And yeah, I think, yeah. I have many thoughts, but not one one to to express. But this is what I where I wanted yeah, to say. I I understand what you're saying, and uh, I heard you know the demonization from whatever sides of whatever. I heard listing of rights and wrongs from what I believe are both sides, whatever. Because I saw one set of people talking, listing out you know like public prosecution, A, B, C, D, E, somebody else saying A, B, C, D, E. So if I've come through in the talk as being one-sided, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't you know, experience it that way, but I don't know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe your perception is right, I don't know. Thank you.
Hello, I'm Cyril. Uh, I'm here since uh, five years in Uruguay. I'm here, uh, pardon. I'm Cyril. I'm here since five years in Uruville. And I would like also to speak about the, to share my concern about the, the problem of governance and the lack of uh, safe space to express ourselves. Uh, I, I've been uh, participating in the, and to speak with my friends or William, I've been participating in this uh, vote process that from the resident assembly, from our government, uh, governance body, <laughs> democratic body. And uh, I've been witnessing that we have to write our names on the built-in, put the votes, built-in of votes in some box which are totally sealed. And the counting on the, of the voting is totally private and no witnessed at all by anyone. So I've been sharing this concern to the appropriate uh, body. And I've been received like with no trust and no safe space at all. And uh, laughing at me deeply and and explaining me somehow that it's in purpose that it's done like this. So I have some, so I've been to a resident assembly service. I've been to Oroville Council. Say, they suggest me to send the, after explaining me why it is like this, justifying it. They ask me to send an email so saying this request because I said it's totally undemocratic. And you cannot say to save our democratic process if this is totally not democratic. And I have no answer. It's three months. So I'm very sad to do this like this here. But uh, I mean, I like Oroville Resident Assembly to be true and to be democratic. And so I think the minimum is confession confidentiality and anonymous and trust and allowing everyone to express himself without putting your name and without anonyma. I mean, it's the basic of democracy, I feel, I mean, from what I've been experiencing in my country and in what I have seen in other country. So I want to share this and that's all. Uh, Dave, and have we had, how, do we have anybody on the internet that wants to speak? No? No, I mean, we don't have anybody wanting to speak. Okay. Um, Paulette, Aurelio is just, can you give maybe Aurelio a chance? We're just trying to hear as many voices and you, you, it, it'll come back. My name is Aurelio. I had met you before. Um, it's clear that there are many concerns and many issues out there. And crisis is actually a very potent space. You know, it holds a great potential actually for transformation. And I wanted to, I think Aurelio was always very good in crisis momentum. You know, when we had the cyclone, when we had the tsunami, when we had fires and all of that, you know, I felt that the community was acting in a very grounded way. Yeah? And I, there is, of course, there's lots of things coming up in, in, in the crisis. Each one is faced with their own dilemma and the shadows are all visible. Uh, to stay pragmatic, I wanted to actually ask you, when you mentioned before, we are far away from actually from uh, the possibility of dialogue. And in the same context, actually, there's this proposal of uh, from the International Advisory Council member actually to look into the possibility of healing. So I wanted to ask you what from your perspective, um, the ground condition for deeper dialogue. And because in, in a therapeutic field, 
uh, we have very much, uh, there is conditions for healing to happen. The safe space has been mentioned many times, a uh, field of trust and established trust, a uh, willingness actually to look at the shadows, uh, to recognize that healing is needed. And that, as it was mentioned, maybe there's a, a big part of the community says, yes, we need healing, but maybe another part, which is actually imposing uh, many adverse actions, we don't know even if they see the necessity of healing because there's a righteousness there also. So my question is actually, what from your perspective are the conditions for uh, deep dialogue? And if this wants to happen in the middle of December, talking about healing, could we actually prepare some of the conditions, some of the ground rules? See, where I, where I am, huh? all that I'm setting out and what I've told Dana is that we have a group, 20, 25 people who want to come together and explore. I'm willing to work with them. Do I know exactly how it's going to turn out right now? I don't. Do I agree with you that the situation is grim? It's more than, worse than grim. Yes, I agree with you. Right? Do I have the power to go and tell Jayanti whether she should give uh, uh, you know, visas or not? I don't. Right? I don't even know if IAC has that power. I'm not even part of any of these structures. Right? I've been invited to do my best. I'm offering something. And if there aren't 20, 25 people who wish to do this, there's nothing for me to do. Simple. So if there are some people, we will sit together and figure out what to do. Yeah. I, I That's think really where my confidence comes from, that something can be done. Where my confidence comes from is when I've worked with the Tamil Nadu government, for example, on water management and things like that. I've worked with village realities, which are as difficult or more difficult than Oroville. I've worked with Dalit communities under very difficult conditions. And when a few people sit together and start looking at themselves, some energy gets created and there is hope, right? There's nothing more that I'm offering, nothing less that I'm offering, that's it. So if we don't have that set of people, good for me. I don't have to travel all the way for four days and take time off from my other work. But if there is a, an opportunity, if there is a hope, I'm willing to put in my effort to see what happens. I think it's very important to look actually at the, at the ground rules for it because we recently made a survey. There's something like 120 therapists in our village. Working. So there, uh, there's no problem of finding 25 people who are interested in healing and process work and all of that. The question is actually, what would be the condition community-wide actually to make this as an effective exercise? Because it's no use if all the therapists come together and speak about healing, which is their profession, basically, and they know it. It's about those people who are basically in, let's say, if we look at Auroville as an organism, yeah, And uh, can we see ourselves as this organism, as this totality of it, with its different organs, its different functions, its different modalities and layers? And do we, if we recognize together that something needs to be done, something is out of balance, can those uh, organics, I'm saying, for instance, if the liver is not working, yeah, and uh, uh, one part of the uh, of the body is basically, or one part of the being is says, no, my liver is all fine, no problem. I keep on drinking, I keep on smoking and stuff. Everything is fine, I'm going my way and I have the, the, the divine impetus of doing so. So it needs a recognition of the organism. Yes, there is a problem and we want to work on it together. I think what we're really facing and, and it had been mentioned before that even here in this room, there's all people who are interested in dialogue, interested in the process of it, 
but there is also another section of the uh, community, maybe in relationship with the authorities who are just uh, in this righteous position of being uh, called to do those adverse actions and then healing is not possible. You cannot one part of the being says, yes, I'm going, I'm giving myself into this process now. And another part says, forget it, you know, I'm, I don't need any healing. So that's why I'm asking you, what would be ground rules? What are the conditions? Which was asked several times actually already this, uh, this evening, no? What are the conditions for something like this to be effective? See, if you ask me theoretically, what are the conditions, we can speak about it. But if you're asking me practically, can I create those conditions for you? I can't. That's the reality, no? Right? And many of the things you're talking about are things that happen when, I'm, when many people can see themselves like cells of, of an organism. If there are bits and pieces and people are seeing themselves like bits and pieces, it is not an organism. It's a set of bacteria or virus or something like that. Right? So like I said last time, do I know exactly what, what has got to be done? No, I don't know. And That's I don't the question. think anybody knows. Okay. So... Yeah, pushing it to me and saying, do you know, doesn't help because I'm saying this clearly. Are there 15, 20 people? Can we sit down and figure out what is possible? If you don't need me, I don't have to be there, okay? So if you have 120 people, please go ahead and start. You don't need me. That's fine. If you need me, I'll come. And to... We just have to start from where the reality is and then build from there. That's my understanding of any of these situations. Because if we ask for and we keep waiting for conditions, they're not going to happen. Yeah, it was not so much about conditions. It was about how this is suggested ground rules actually to make it happen. Because uh, I think we so that set, no, we can set ground rules who will make it happen. Well, I think actually because there's a concrete proposal for December and I thought actually if, if this is out then people can actually prepare it and then be prepared when the proposal comes and when the possibility is there that actually I think we sure. are we are quite good in being constructive. Right now there is lots of sure. disorientation and stuff but we I think there's a big section of the committee which wants to be constructive and actually sure. further the process. Sure. And I just want to- I'll suggest able... this. Huh? I'll speak to Dena again this evening and say, what are we going to do about this? Right? Okay. And see what we can do. Yeah. yeah, but you know, maybe at on this particular thing, I'm exactly like where most of you are, no? I really don't have a role. At least you people are residents. You have a role. I don't even have a role out here. I'm a guest. And I'm speaking from the guest position. And the only way whatever work I've done has ever worked, and anybody here who's been in this position knows it, if I'm speaking the truth and the truth has some resonance, something will happen. If I'm speaking the truth and there's no resonance, nothing will happen. And if what I'm speaking is not broadly truthful anyway, nothing will happen. Most of the places I've been to, I've succeeded by just being as honest as I can, as being open as I can and taking things forward. That's the best I can do. I don't know anything else. Okay, so then let's hope that truth prevails. Absolutely. What else can we hope for? No. One, one minute. Only. We have to hope hope this, that I just wanted to connect. And love hands, and hands. I just wanted it to connect to her. It oh, yeah. Hans Tollert was waiting. So. so I, in your previous presentation, you raised a lot of issues of my personal concern, and one is where you talk about the importance of knowledge and technology. So. 
I am one of the person who called back Roger, and all my research was on the official discussion on how to build the galaxy. And finally, in 1971, there was a letter from the United Nations, which so far I've not published. Nobody knows except the chairman. So this is one issue. But uh, a major issue, which is now what we are debating, is when you discuss about the shadow. And it's very sorry that uh, nobody's mentioning this. But there is a lacuna in what you mentioned. So I'm a Jungian. I published my, in fact, my, my most popular book has been published four times, is The Mother on Psychology. But there is an appendix of 150 pages dealing with the shadow and the evil persona. So the evil persona is a term that Cherubindo borrows from Jung. And it was a major ashramite, the one in charge of letters of yoga, who submitted to Cherubindo this text from Jung. And Cherubindo replied, that interests me a lot, because it's my experience that as soon as the sadak start doing something serious, either this opposing being is there or it manifests immediately after and this force the sadak to do exactly the opposite. So I've been hammering this community for the past 37 years with this text. And this is one thing is the evil persona. And it goes together with what you have not mentioned, the projection of the shadow. And this is exactly where we are. So if we want to heal, there is no other way but to go through that. And so what you see, these two major camps, but then there are also the intermediate camps or the single individuals, nobody is doing this work of meeting the shadow. And Jung and the mother are very clear, and Sharobindo, you have to do. And another connection between Jung and Sharobindo and the mother, they talk on the psychic being, and Jung talk on the self. It is the role of the self for Jung or the psychic being for the mother and Sharobindo to do the work on the shadow. So as long as the people individually don't do the work on the shadow, they will go on projecting on the others. And the mother even said, if you don't know what is your shadow, just look what most upset you in other people. When you cannibalize, you terrify people. That is your own shadow. Then it turns collective. And when it turns collective, you have war, Nazis, genocide, or exactly what's happening now. So we go back to the guidelines and also the town, nobody here is doing what the mother asks in terms of guidelines, in terms of town, in terms of sadhana, because there is no sadhana if you don't use the psychic being to work on the shadow. Then you have exactly what's happening now. So I'm one of the few people here who is not terrified, I'm very calm. I think that in fact, this is what the mother calls the Makali blow. It's falling on our head. Are we willing to do the work or not? I agree with you. Yes, I, I feel so valuable what you say always, but as soon as you say nobody is, no one is, then people shut down, you know, it's a pity because you have a great heart and there's a lot to say and it's very wise and good. But nobody is, nobody is, it implies certain things. So you have to be a bit, it's a pity, no? Don't use nobody is. I'm, I, I try myself my best. I wanted to uh, mention uh, the ground rules. I had suddenly a, a kind of idea that uh, our crisis is actually one of decision-making process. That's our real crisis, no? or the lack thereof and everything that comes from that. We don't know what to do as a collective, no? In the, uh, except uh, yeah, we should be following mother's guidelines, but yeah. Uh, so I had this uh, thing. I, one of the ground rules could be 
that this wonderful process could be for people who are interested in governance. It should involve only like the groups and those people who wish, and of course, from all the, all the, all the sides also, including the ones that are now in the groups, who some of them I really recognize. So I don't have uh, this uh, uh, sides issue, uh, but I feel that could be something we really need because that's where the crisis is. I mean, the crisis has always been amongst us and in us because we don't follow the guidelines and uh, uh, we don't get behind building the city. I believe this is part of the big part of the problem that we don't get be behind, like uh, Aurelio was saying, the tsunami or the, the Matramandir, and this is why she gave this project, so we can all work and stop talking endlessly, yeah? And uh, I think we are just missing that uh, wonderful opportunity. So I thought hey, maybe your wonderful process uh, needs to be done with people who feel open to do the work of governance in all the different groups. Sure. On all sides. And people have a call, you know, I know that, uh, there's not the call is not enough because you have to be uh, clear enough from your inner self uh, that you will go through that and uh, i think that's yeah i thought hmm, that could be the ground rules because all the conflicts we have on all levels will be represented by that the amount of people you propose will will represent all our problems it, it will all be there and uh, for them to, to uh, look at it and go through it, go through the process and, and also have some form of governance, no? It doesn't have to be perfect, but at least, yeah. Thank you. Actually, I forgot there's one ground rule I had suggested, yeah? The ground rule I had suggested was that, yeah, whenever you quote the mother or Sri Aurobindo, you also say, how you're understanding it and you're interpreting it so it can become the starting point of a dialogue. Yeah, I had put down one rule. Okay, I agree. But at the same time, for me, when somebody calls mother, there is no uh, issue because I, I hear the words and that brings me into that space. And don't forget that that's also an element of it. It's great to have her words come out. I, I am not, I don't have a problem with that, <laughs> but uh, okay. Yes, I understand what you mean. It's how we use it and the... So, so that's me again. So before I was more focusing on the destructive part. Now I want to focus on the constructive and I have three dreams. So Jorobindo had one, Jorobindo had five, Martin Luther King one, I'm in between. So one is, a, one is a, I guess, an easy one for me to realize even soon. So you were proposing, a, you listed some solutions. So one was to find, a, to find a, a common project, you know? Start with something that everybody can agree on. And uh, that's an idea I already shared and I want to re-share again building a resident assembly pavilion. I call it pavilion just because we have many pavilions, but this wouldn't be a parliament. It wouldn't be a, a place to vote because I know there is a discussion about the governance and uh, uh, what the resident assembly should do and shouldn't do, uh, but a place to meet for the residents. And, uh, and um, we are, uh, so there is sometimes confusion. Uh, people think foundation is uh, the secretary and the governing board. We are all foundation. Foundation is us, and uh, resident assembly is also all of us. Uh, people in the in the other working groups uh, supported by the governing board, they are resident assembly as well. And uh, let's build uh, this place. I think it's easy. This can be a common project. That's the easiest dream. Uh, the second one is, um, I think, one once this group start to talk, there might be uh, as a solution that I'm offering. I see Sauro. I see Shankadevi. From, uh, from two different sides, quote unquote, merging these two different working groups because we can't have two working committee, we cannot have two of FMC, we cannot have two of everything. So uh, maybe you take the best out of it and uh, you agree which are the members of this new refined, uh, re 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 refounded, uh, uh, let's say, working committee, FMC, et cetera. And, and then you ask the resident assembly to ratify it. 
uh, because of course uh, this has to be done according to the process and uh, and then uh, you start uh, fresh you start a new uh, that's a little bit more difficult and the third one is very really unrealistic but i like it so i think uh, the Oroville foundation act is not the right uh, uh, act i don't think foundation is the right body to govern Oroville. Oroville has to be a place nobody owns no state owns and now we have this influence of a nationalistic st state which is mm, which has put a lot of pressure in this uh, in this community and uh, as to start from the government of India, of course, I'm not saying to do a revolution, not at all, not at all. But uh, I think someone was mentioning it should be a, another state of consciousness where you want to really embrace this project, which UNESCO supports, make it something new. There is no place on earth which states say, don't belong to me. Yes, it's in India, or it can be in Bangladesh, it can be in Italy, doesn't matter. Uh, don't belong to anybody, belong to humanity. This is so revolutionary. Why? It's a dream. So, uh, it's, but very far away I get from my realization, but still uh, let me nourish this dream and sharing yeah. the strengths. But that's what makes it worthwhile, no? Yes. My name is Shivaya, and I have simply, what I understood is an invitation from Raghu, an in invitation in humbleness that some people who actually have already or have maybe even, maybe not, but I have an experience, I have experiences where to, to be together really humble and just call from an inner call and find somehow call for first steps. And in this richness of, of aspiration, it will be indicated and really look what are stepping stones because what you bring is all, that's already projects, you see. But where can we start with healing? Because the very first step is of a totally different kind. It, it's not a mental idea how, yes, later we could, then find the both groups or different sides or whatever and see how we come to. But this will have to emerge from a healthy ground. And this healthy ground has to be built, subtly built first. Healing and many things. I don't know. You see, I'm really here on the no, not no. Just a reminder that if we go into a process, let's say of, of the collective and the groups that uh, do this uh, process, then we must get rid of everything because residence assembly is also uh, not innocent as was uh, said by somebody today. I don't know if you heard that, but uh, um, no trust, believe me, the last 20 years, where is the trust amongst? <laughs> all these groups and all this, the residence assembly for me from the very beginning, it was like a strange and it's full of twisted things. So we would have to start afresh completely because yeah, I come back to my idea of the governing groups and all the groups, major groups and people who wish to go through that experience, they, they could do this process as a representative of the community also and uh, be wonderful because it has to be connected to our governance and uh, it's to be done with a bit more consciousness rather than democracy. I, I just want to add what I feel is we have to accept everything that is the, this full confusion with all the things and not say this wasn't good and so on. Yeah, we know there were many shortcomings, but it's not the point. We have to embrace it and we have to embrace the people. But I mean, how do we grow in this embrace? It's not, and then things will come. If we have now already think, oh no, residence assembly, that, that has served for something. That was an attempt to, to do. Let's value this attempt and see the limitations and see where the shortcomings, see 
I mean, that's that's what I would I would rather look at the learnings than than throw it away. I just just a last note. I uh, Raghu, you you called yourself a guest. Uh, you're not here by accident. You're a catalyst, I would call you, and your role is extremely significant because it has been uh, initiated from the International Advisory Council and the Governing Board. So certainly you're a bridge, and this process that you have, you know, fostered and supported will go somewhere. So I just want to thank you for that. I know it's a huge effort and we'd want to strain your nerves and burn you out with all these stories. But uh, so I just, no, I uh, just, so. just I, want I, to say I that. No, I understand uh, what you're saying, but officially, I mean, right, I am a guest in the sense that I've been invited to do this and if we take the next step, then maybe I become a catalyst. I'd love to do that. I've offered it. So I'm waiting for that next step to be accepted. Yeah, it, it will come, it will come. Okay. <laughs> yeah, my microphone is gone, so thanks. Uh, Dave and anybody online? Okay. And the time is what, about five past six now, is it? So we've got 25 minutes more. So just, uh, I'd like to invite people who haven't spoken, if they want to, please come. And do you want, do you want to say something? Just give me a moment, I'll be back. <laughs> if, if we don't have any, uh, if we don't have any people jumping up, I'm gonna put pressure on Naveen to say something. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. Hi again. <laughs> I was thinking how wonderful uh, coaching processes are. We know that in Aravil also. That uh, if you have this representative group, uh, you see you cannot anymore have the opportunist taking the reins like always has been the case in Auroville or the vested interest or the power play or the habitual because through that process we will the people engaged will slowly come to experience their egos melting and uh, uh, being engaged for uh, Auroville and humanity, this is the great thing that can happen for us. And be so good if it would be connected to governance and all the all the aspects of governance. And that would be it. because in that process, I know that you have to let go of your patterns. It's going to be great for the people who are in it, I really. Yeah, because we cannot have opportunities in there anymore. You know, it's, it, that's why coaching is so great, no? For all the companies or organizations, because you get rid of all the vested. That's the hope. I'm sorry, but I have to react a little bit. <clears throat> I have to react a little bit. Hi. It's not very um, clear. Yes, hello. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I want to react a little bit because <clears throat> I have spent eight years working in different groups <clears throat> from housing service to FAMC or anything. And I have seen very hardworking people with very little um, opportunistic possibilities. So I feel a little bit sorry that we get pictured as being uh, totally dysfunctional I've seen work people working very, very, very hard. Huh? Yeah. So no. Hans, can I speak now? No, no, I would just I 
I have the center and I would like to speak also because I have been, I've been working very hard with a lot of people who worked very hard, who were uh, respecting their mandate, who were, who were respecting the rules that were given in that time. So I don't feel comfortable with having, uh, I don't feel comfortable with people saying that we have been only making a big mess and we didn't respect any rules. In the time that I was working there, many people was, were concrete, concretely uh, constructing guidelines, bringing back to the community, having it approved. And for many, many ways, people have, expect, have respected some kind of common authority. It was not perfect because if somebody, the, the few individuals did not want to respect it, there was no way of acting on kind of saying, okay, you don't do it, uh, then what could you do? There was very little, um, there was no punishment or not, not any consequences for people that, want to, that didn't want to follow the common, common guidelines. I, I still feel there was a lot of, there's still a lot of very good guidelines and mandates created by the community. And, the whole idea, but what I was was I reacted to was saying that people don't respect authority. I didn't, I didn't have that experience. There were a few individuals that were not respecting authority. Special guidelines that were created by the whole community, but that were accepted, and again brought back. I've been maybe thirty five years in sitting in groups of endlessly discussing new groups of organization, new ways of how to do it. He did try it years and years and years and years. And so far, maybe we are not, we were not complete and we were not, we are not finalized. But what I experience now of um, having a total uh, authoritarian kind of form, in, and, and with people that I know from before that were not following any rules before, they, were, they have, for my impression, a lot of uh, lack of integrity. Now I, I feel, now I have a problem because how can I feel trust? How can I feel uh, comfortable with this kind of authority? I'm not having problems with authority if people are really doing their best to do the right thing, but I have, I have a problem now. What can I do? And I'm, I'm really willing to talk. And I've been before taking contact with people for so-called from the other side. And <clears throat> what I get back is like, I'm not talking to you because I only want to talk people who think like me. And I said, yeah, but how can we ever become a human unity in this way? And I come here for a city, but a city with love. I come from a city that was bombed down in the war, and my parents told me, we have to build a better city. We have to build a human unity. This war should never happen again. So this is my instruction for all my life. But I'm sorry, we didn't have the money or we didn't have the means between us to build a city. But I think it's nothing to do actually anymore with the city. I have a feeling, I have a doubt, is it still about the city? I have a doubt about it. It's about authority now. So I'm willing to talk and I'm willing to open my heart and I'm willing to come together. I'm even willing to trust. I'm willing to experiment. And I'm willing to take even the next step. But I, you know, to have the, the present realities where Everything could be online, my house, my children, my, my, my life. I'm, I'm here 43 years. I cannot go back to my country anymore. So what, what is my future? I want to co-create my future but in this thing of human unity with everybody, also anybody. Okay, that's all what I want to say. Yeah, it's me again, Sandira. Um, 
Yes, I think we tried a lot of things in the past and it didn't work out and we were blocking each other and uh, we kind of tried to find the solution on the level which we are used to act in the whole world. So what I right now with this wake up call see that there are people who are investing to try to look solutions from, from a higher level of consciousness, which is actually uh, represented in the Arjuna in the yellow second tier meme. And uh, I kind of want to say that there are Yeah, I, I want to say that are people here in Oroville who are now looking from a higher level. For example, uh, there is a group of um, co collective organization who are really diving deep into the charter and the Oroville dream and looking from a deep, what did mother say uh, for organization and so on, and just really wanted to find solutions on a much deeper level. Um, but parallel, we need to look at, at the shadow sides in the first year because we are, that was actually why we couldn't come. You were saying in the beginning, there are a lot of individuals who are in the yellow consciousness, but collectively, we are coming back and are having our arrows in the first year. So we need to look at the shadows and we need to transform and see that we have like a healthy form, that we have a functional form of each. And we need to really identify where is the shadow and where is the healthy form uh, of each, each meme so that we can really move forward in the second tier. So I think we need to have people who are willing to look at all this. And we have people who now looking in the second tier how an organization could happen. And also there are a meditation group like uh, from Kira Diyoshi, like speaking out of silence, having 20 minutes silence first, just a lot of attempts. I think it was a deep wake up call and we just need to move this forward. And I'm kind of, I don't, it's happening, but it's, it's happening without this healing process, which you are suggesting. And, but for this healing process, we would need the other, the other side, uh, which I'm hesitant to, to call it in this way, but we, we need to find an, a way where we start to have a dialogue or a healing or whatsoever. Uh, but there is a great openness for many people to work on a different level now. And I think we just need to take the chance and move it forward that Oroville becomes what it's supposed to, to become. Yeah, there's just one thing I would like to add to what you're saying. See, when you have a, you know, when, when you have a structure already, when you have all these processes going on already, you need to build something like a, a scaffolding through which a transformation can happen. Otherwise, there's a great fear that whatever there is will fall, right? And that is terrible. If what is coming in is just as, you know, whatever dysfunctional or in, unacceptable, then if there's just a clash between these two, you destroy without creating anything, right? So what is the, the scaffolding? What's the middle structure which can hold these two? That's really what I'm talking about as the healing process. Right? So more than this, if you ask me, how is it going to happen? I don't know. I know this is what's got to be done. I know it happened in other places. So it has to, it can only happen with the wisdom of everybody in the system. It cannot happen from an external theory. Because the worst thing that can happen now is, is anything theoretical. Right? Yeah, what so has I, to happen is something that emerges from your wisdom, right? It can't happen from anywhere else. 
I trust the process and I think you play a role in this whole thing, what is happening. So that's one part and there are many parts, but we need to see that we are bringing everything together in, in, in alignment. Just giving a time notification as well. We've just over 10 minutes to go and we're gonna finish sharp at 6.30. So, did you hear me, Raghu? Uh, let's say you have a group, uh, 25 people, uh, and that does not include all the others. <laughs> uh, if you have a group of 25 people, it will not include all the others. And the only uh, benefit we will have as a community if, the, if this group goes through this process actually goes into the decision-making process. I want to seal it now because there are, there are literally thousands of people who will not participate in that process. So how, you know. But Hans, I can't, I can't uh, mandate any of this, right? So let's hope that, you know, there's enough people who come forward who can help, that's it. I'm willing to start from wherever it is possible. And there's only one step that one can see. I mean, that's what yoga says also. Now, yoga says there's only one step that you can see. You cannot see the whole road. So what's the next step? I'm just saying that creating at least, you know, I mean, there's been a lot of work done on this. Now, 1% somehow has an impact on a large group. Right, so at 25 is just one percent of your of your total numbers. So let's see if there's a one percent who would like to start and what happens there, and build on that. That's that's the only thing I can see right now. I I actually can't see anything more than that. Right, and even the stuff that Giovanni mentioned that. I suggested, you know, why don't you take one or two projects and all that. That's, you know, not that I'm suggesting the projects, but I know that shadows can be worked with only if you work together on something. Shadows cannot be worked with in theory. Shadows come up only when you and I are working on something. I think you agree with me. You think I agree with you. And then we discover that we actually don't agree. And why we don't agree is all the stuff, you know, projection and uh, all of that, right? That will only happen if you and I are engaged on something together. It will never happen otherwise. And then you don't work with it theoretically. You sit and actually work with it with your heart if you can. And I personally don't think sadhana is an individual thing. Good evening, everyone. Um, I would like to. Um, I would like to first state I am a bit emotional and bit slightly nervous. louder. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm a bit emotional today, a bit uh, nervous as well. I would like to speak in Tamil first because that makes me feel comfortable and then I can also translate. Yeah, so uh, I would like to maybe address uh, maybe someone here who knows Tamil. I know Navin knows Tamil and it is easy for me to face Navin. Hi. <laughs> okay, so and I every background I'm there, like uh, here, and I'm uh, like, uh, okay, yeah. So, so right now, number on the Mathi Mathi Pace, trust, like, how can I trust? Um, Naria situations number quote Pandro, uh, in the situations, in the situations, Nala on the uh, trust Panamodile. And the trust is the same as the work. We have to work with the work. Now, 
GBFMC ன்ற ஒரு பொசிஷன்ல இருக்கிறேன் பட் ஐ டோன்ட் ஸ்பீக் ஃப்ரம் அந்த இதுல இருந்து நான் பேச வரல லைக் என்னை வந்து என்னை லேபிள் பண்ணிடாதீங்க ஜிபிஎஃப்எம்ஸ்ல இருந்து பேசுறேன் அப்படின் அதுக்குதான் வந்து இப்ப ஜியோனி பேசும்போது கூட வந்து இங்க நிறைய பேர் வந்து அதர் சைட்ல இருந்து வந்திருக்கிறாங்க ஜிபி சைட்ல இருந்து யாரும் வரலன்னும் போது நான் உடனே கையை எழுத்து நான் வந்திருக்கிறேன்னு சொல்ல விரும்பல நான் எனக்கு அந்த எண்ணம் இல்லை ஸோ எனக்கு அதை லேபிள் பண்ண வேண்டாம் ஐம் ஜஸ்ட் ஷேரிங் இப்போ வந்து நான் எப்படி ஃபீல் பண்றேன்னா தெர் இஸ் அ கொலாட்ரல் டேமேஜ் ஆன் ஆல் சைட்ஸ் அந்த டேமேஜ வந்து இப்ப விகாண்ட் நம்ம வந்து அதை வந்து ரெக்டிஃபை பண்ணணும்னா விகாண்ட் ஆஸ்க் ஜஸ்டிஸ் வந்து அதை வந்து ஒரு நான் செஞ்சதுக்கெல்லாம் எனக்கு எனக்கு வந்து கஷ்டத்துக்கெல்லாம் வந்து முதல்ல எனக்கு நியாயம் சொல்லுங்க அதுக்கப்புறம் நான் அந்த வேலை செய்யறேன்னு சொன்னா ஐ திங்க் ரெண்டு பேர் சைட்லயுமே அந்த மாதிரி நிறைய லிஸ்ட் பண்ணிட்டே போகலாம் ரேதர் தன் தட் அதை பத்தி பேசாம கேன் வி சே லைக் ஒரு ஜிப்ரன் அழக ஒன்று சொல்லுவார் ஒர்க் இஸ் ஒர்க் இஸ் லவ் மேட் விசிபிள் அப்படின்னு சொல்லுவார் நிறைய விஷயம் வந்து சேர்ந்து வேலை செய்யும் பொழுது தானா கிளியர் ஆகும் ரைட் நோ நான் எப்படி பாக்குறேன்னா வந்து ட்ரஸ்ட் ஹஸ் டு பி ஏர்ன்ட் ட்ரஸ்ட வந்து நம்மளால வந்து டிமாண்ட் பண்ண முடியாதுன்னு நினைக்கிறேன் ரெண்டு சைடுமே லைக் எதர் ஃப்ரம் தி லைக் ஐ டோன்ட் வாண்ட் நேம் தோஸ் ஹஸ் டூ சைட்ஸ் பட் ஸ்டில் ஆன் ஆல் சைட்ஸ் ட்ரஸ்ட் கே நாட் பி டிமாண்டட் இட் ஹஸ் டு பி ஏர்ன்ட் அந்த ஏர்ன் பண்றது எப்படி ஏர்ன் பண்ணுவோம் நம்ம வி ஹாவ் டு கம் ஃபார்வர்ட் அண்ட் சே ஓகே இதெல்லாம் தான் காமன் பாயிண்ட்ஸ் இந்த காமன் பாயிண்ட்ஸ்ல கேன் ஐ கேன் ஐ லைக் வி கேன் ஹாவ் டிஸ்அக்ரிமெண்ட்ஸ் நிறைய விஷயத்துல டிஸ்அக்ரிமெண்ட்ஸ் இருக்கலாம் அந்த எல்லா டிஸ்அக்ரிமெண்ட்ஸை தாண்டி கேன் வி நாட் ஹாவ் ஒன் ஆர் டூ பிளேசஸ் வேற விஷயம் நம்ம ரெண்டு பேருக்கும் இந்த இடத்துல வந்து ஒத்து போகிறோம் அந்த இடத்துல நம்ம சேர்ந்து வேலை செய்வோம் அப்போ என்னை பத்தி உங்களுக்கு தெரியும் உங்களை பத்தி எனக்கு தெரியும் இதை ஒரு எடுத்துக்காட்டா வச்சு அடுத்த இன்னொரு ரெண்டு ப்ராஜெக்ட் எடுக்கலாம் இப்படிதான் நான் வந்து ஏன் பண்ணணும்னு நினைக்கிறேன் நான் வந்து இப்போ ஜிபிஎஃப்ஏஎம்சின்ற பொசிஷன்ல இருந்தாலும் ஐ திங்க் ஐ டோன்ட் ஹாவ் லைக் இன் மெனி ஆஸ்பெக்ட்ஸ் ஐ ஃபீல் கம்யூனிட்டி சைட்ல இருந்து மீன் மெனி பீப்புள் சைட் ஐ ஹாவ் லாஸ்ட் ட்ரஸ்ட் யா so uh, i have to earn that as well naan and earn panni avano adu and it's not saying like naan gbfmc il irukkaradha like it doesn't mean like the governing bodies to trust everything i i say they are also going to look at me okay is shankar doing what he is meant to do and mari adu oru paarvile sandhega paarvile da ellarume paathunu irupanga nama community side la irund sandhega paarvile da irukranga shankar anga poi okkandane yen avan okkanda avan na nambalama venam endra oru ella side lume oru trust illa i can't go and say okay navin என்னை பத்தி உனக்கு நல்லா தெரியும் என்ன ட்ரஸ்ட் பண்ணுங்களா ட்ரஸ்ட் பண்ணுங்களா நான் கெஞ்சிட்டு இருக்க முடியாது ஐ கேன் டிமாண்ட் இட் ஆஸ் வெல் ஸோ என்னோட ஒர்க்கில் பார்ப்போம் சேர்ந்து வேலை செய்வோம் அதுல இருந்து ட்ரஸ்ட் வருதான்றது ஏன் பண்ண ட்ரஸ்ட்டை நம்ம ஏன் பண்ண பார்ப்போம் ஐ டோன்ட் ஃபீல் கொஸோ கம்ஃபர்டபுள் ட்ரான்ஸ்லேட்டிங் பட் நவீன் கேன் யூ சமரைஸ் இட் பட் let me try to summarize ninge ulla vandu maathikonga so from what i hear shankar saying is that uh, that there is a lot of labeling that's happening and um, he doesn't want to get sucked into that and even when jivani asked i hardly see anybody from the gb side uh, he didn't feel like putting his hand up because he doesn't really feel such labels really help but the crux of what i think what he was saying is that uh, there is a lot of uh, hurts and uh, incursions on both sides and there's a trust that's been lost on both sides over multiple issues and uh, there is a lot of trust that can be and we we caught up in uh, demanding trust from each other but he feels on, on, he's saying on all sides not just both sides but he says trust has to be earned and not demanded and how can we earn it is perhaps when he quoted khalil gibran where he says khalil gibran apparently says love is work made visible What's work is love made visible okay yeah uh, so work is love made visible so can we truly come and collaborate and uh, and build trust through our collaboration rather than demanding it out of each other because once we start demanding it there's no end to it yeah instead can i can we earn it from each other instead of demanding it from each other and uh, he says he's i mean his heart is his heart and hand is open uh, yeah to let's collaborate and earn on each other's trust no there's one more thing he said which is very important which is that if i stand here and if you stand here and say you heal my hurts first or you make up for your stuff first and i keep saying you make up first there's no end to this process 
Yeah, in a sense, that's what I'm saying also in my the thing I'm saying, once you take stands like that, you cannot move to your aspirational space. That kind of summarizes um, both <laughs> all my points. I'm sorry, I couldn't express myself directly in English, but it was a very heavy moment for me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Shankar. Uh, Raghu, I may quickly also share uh, the community as well. Uh, so in terms of really asked, one of the ground, I like to say conditions, more than ground rules, and if I hear you right, uh, is, um, um, and this is something I felt, we've become very, very good at finger pointing. And uh, uh, I think there's an excellent list that we're able to draw in terms of what the other side has not done and has uh, messed up and we have excellent lists. But what I hear very little of is uh, owning up to how have I contributed to the situation? Yeah, how have I contributed to this conflict? Now, I think everybody in the last 54 years has probably even spent a few days in Orville. We all have a role. We all have a role to play in co-creating what this child is today. Yeah, but a very little owning up of, uh, so one of the ground conditions I feel perhaps is important is for those few, that, that one person that comes together is to probably look at, to be self-reflective and ask how have I contributed to this or how, how am I a part of this larger? So I would consider that as a ground condition. If no, I'm I mean, coming- I wouldn't state that as a ground rule. Okay. Say, can this set of people come together and create the condition where that is possible? Okay. That's a very difficult thing to do. So sure. that one percent or whoever comes together has to be willing to say, how do we create conditions where I can stand up and say, this is how I was part of the problem. This is my grief. Beautiful. But if these two are not owned up, grief will always be anger and projection on the other. Grief always turns into anger and rage. It's not owned up and worked through. And I actually since even when listening to many people today i'm seeing so much of grief unstated many of the voices are coming from grief beautiful thank you Rabbi. so I think uh, it's probably time to wrap up now. So what I'm gonna propose is we just have a moment of silence. I'd just like to thank everybody. I won't name any names, everybody uh, involved in this. I'm, I'm really sorry, I, I raised my hand, hand a little late. Uh, Tom, Tom, there's one hand up. Nilima or somebody. Where's the hand? Yes, I'm speaking. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so good evening, everybody. And I'm, I'm really touched by what is happening. And good evening, Raku. I'll just introduce, I'm Nilima. I'm sorry, I cannot uh, put on my camera as I'm on a very low bandwidth here. Uh, I'm a newcomer, Raku. And um, my newcomer process is coming to an end. And um, I, I want to comment on just a few things. One was that this, uh, notion of not feeling safe. Uh, as a newcomer, and I've been visiting Oroville for over 13 years, uh, but it's only in the last two years that I've been here consistently and entered the process. I was given yesterday a notice by the housing saying leave, uh, evacuate the house in uh, uh, X number of days because the newcomer uh, house needs to be given away. It's and um, I go, I approach the seniors in the community saying, uh, this is where I am. I'm here with two children and I've been told to vacate the house and go and stay in a guest house uh, in the high tourist season uh, to find the cheap guest house. Uh, what I'm trying to say is everyone here knows what I'm talking about. I feel as unsafe uh, being here. And I meet senior people and people tell me, uh, when I talk to them, because I've been working with 
integral education, being open to the works of Mother and Shorabindo. And it's actually the philosophy that brought me to Oroville. Uh, when I say at the end of the day that, you know, for me, if I don't find a housing, it's mother's verdict for me. And I'm here to do her work. And I totally believe in that, that if I don't stay in Oroville, then I do this work somewhere else. I'm not stuck to this place. The minute I say that, my commitment to Oroville is questioned. Now, this is coming to me that feel safe if you trust that, right? The same person when I'm leaving is talking to me about feeling unsafe. And I'll see a lot of this. And I, I totally resonate and understand when Hans talks about uh, why are we feeling so unsafe? There's so much of it. One can walk today in Oroville and feel this uncertainty and this unsafe feeling. And I'm saying that in 50 years, why haven't we had a group of people who believe? I've heard stories of people saying that there were foreigners who, when the Indian government went behind them, threw their passport into the ocean, that no one can touch them. And for me, that was like a heroic story, that this is the, the quality of faith and trust. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. I'm this. I'm sorry. I'm going to interrupt here because I, I I'm holding us to the time. I really okay. want to. I, I'm sorry about that, but I'm really sure. feel holding to the time is really really important. So sure. apologies for cutting you short. Okay. No problem. So I am going to propose now some silence, a moment of silence, and then finish. Thank you all very very much. <laughs> 